Hey everyone, welcome to part 10 of Let's Clone a Pokemon game. So in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set up simple regions. And what a region is, is pretty much just like a zone area. So depending on which zone area you're in, different monsters will spawn depending on where you're walking in the tall grass and whatnot. So walking in tall grass here might spawn different monsters instead of walking in tall grass over here. And that's kind of what we're going to be setting up here. And it's just going to be pretty basic right now. We're not going to be triggering any monster spawns. Um, we'll be going over how to actually spawn the different monsters in the future tutorials, but I'm just going to go over how you can easily set up the regions. Now, you could create a brand new trigger box, but it's better just to create something with what we already have, and it's easier to keep track of. So, right here on this tile, I ended up creating a simple trigger. So, it's just a, one of my simple uh, grass ground planes, and I turned it into a trigger, made Z5, Y5, and you guys can adjust it how you want with these. Uh, you just want to keep it a whole number to get it to work correctly. And then from here, what you want to do is actually create different regions. So if we go to add tags, I created a region 1 and region 2. So if we're in this area, it'll be region 0. If we're over here in this area, it'll be region 1 and so on and so forth. We're also going to be making one for this cave here because different monsters are going to be spawning in the cave. Now one thing to note when you're walking through these triggers, um, this center area is either going to be, so if you walk this way it'll be set to zero for the center area. If you walk this way it'll be set to one. Now it's not a big deal because we don't have grass located in this center area or else we'd be spawning monsters from, you know, one area and another area within the middle area. So what you want to do for when you're transferring over two different areas or different regions, you want to leave it blank in the middle because it's not going to matter. We're not going to run into any Pokemon within this area, so it doesn't matter what region we are in. And so you set this one up, region one, set up all those settings. Over here I made, or I edited another tile to be a trigger and I set this for region 2 and I changed the settings on that as well. But you're going to need to adjust the settings to what you have, how you have your tile set up. But yeah. So we'll go jump into the code real quick and I'll show you guys what I added. So we're going to need to create a new variable for regions. It's not going to be anything fancy. We're just going to be using simple ints like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 to distinguish each different area. So later on we can make this maybe a string or something for what the area is called in order to better keep track of each area. But for now we're just going to be using simple ints. So after you create that, we're just going to scroll down here to our on trigger enter. And what we're going to be doing is adding two more if statements, just like we did before with these ones. And we're going to be doing region one and region 2. And so what we're going to be doing is setting okay so yeah I'll just go over this one first. So we're going to be setting region equal to 0 for region 1. So when we enter that we want it to change to our region to 0. And we did a simple debug.log that will display well just text for what region and then it'll give us the number for what region it actually is. Region 2, we are going to set it for regions equals to 1, and then we'll scroll up here. So what else I did in order to get the cave one to work, we don't need triggers for this one because we're already going to be calling it to teleport, so we can set region to 2 for the cave. So first I can go over this, this area is 0, this area is 1, and this area is 2. So when we spawn into the cave entrance, we want to change regions to 2, and when we leave, we want to set it back to 0. Now this can be 0 or 1, doesn't really matter, it could be 10 for all we care. Um, as soon as we cross over the triggers again, depending on which way we're going, it's going to change it to whatever that zone is. And let's say we use like our later tutorial, if we create something like fly, where we fly to a different town, as soon as we hit fly and we select which town, we can change the area. So as long as our player can't break it so they can be in any area and spawn different types of monsters, it should be fine. 
but that's pretty much just checking for bugs and whatnot for the different regions. So we'll bring up our console real quick and we can actually go test this out. So if we enter here, we've entered region one, if we go back, oh, we probably have to go a little bit more forward. Let's go in. And back to region zero. So I guess uh, it's kind of set up how it was before with the weird, uh, weird collision where it can detect from one tile over. So you might want to set it a little bit further, but for now we're just testing it. So we have region one working and we can go over here and it goes into region two and whatnot, back to region one. And when we go inside of the cave, it's set to region two in here. And as soon as we exit back to region one, even when we walk over back to region one, and this is what we're going to be using for the future tutorials. So when we actually like walk through tall grass, we'll get different encounters depending on, you know, which grass we're walking through in each area. So there's probably different ways to actually set that up. But that's the easiest way that I found so far to get it set up that way. So there's probably one more thing we need to do. Um, this is going to be different, or actually, let me think. I believe it gets set to zero anyways at the beginning. So that should be fine. We can check that real quick. Save that real quick. Okay, so region equals zero at the start. That's exactly what we want. Because we don't want to start off our game with no regions because then we wouldn't know exactly what to spawn if that was null. So yeah, that's all I have for this tutorial. Stay tuned for future tutorials covering more of how to create the Pokemon games.